Use the shear only as intended in approved applications as set forth in your owner's manual. The shear is not intended to crush or break objects or structures by swinging or dropping the shear. Do not allow shear, exposed cylinder rod or hoses to come into contact with any obstacles, buildings or the excavator. Inspect the shear every eight hours while performing the required lubrication. Check and maintain auto guide tolerances. Check and maintain all blade tolerances and blade bolt torque specifications. Keeping your piercing tip in good condition will enable your shear to operate more efficiently and minimize downtime. Stock complete wear parts kit and Genrod hard surfacing electrodes in your inventory to minimize your downtime. Perform shear welding maintenance toward the end of the day. This will allow the weld area to cool slowly and you won't have downtime while you wait for the shear to cool. During initial operation or with new or freshly rotated blades installed or any time jaw maintenance has been performed, process thin and lighter material first to work harden wear areas, developing a harder, more durable edge. This is also the most effective time to process materials such as sheet metal or wire. The new or repaired edges will cut more efficiently and be less likely to jam material between the blades. Then as the blades wear, work up to your thicker material and cast metal. When operating in temperatures below freezing, it is important to process light materials first. This allows the shear's structural material to warm up preventing thermal cracking. Insufficient piercing tip gaps will also cause material to jam as the blades and parent material of the jaws are subject to thermal expansion from cutting friction. The tighter the blades run, the hotter they get and the more they expand. Piercing tips and guide blades are the most susceptible to this and will show blue streaking on their corresponding faces. In some cases, they will get so hot that surface cracks and spidering occur. As this happens, it will spread the lower jaw and increase gaps between the primary and secondary blades, causing thin material to jam between them. Another key area to watch is the opening between the guide blades. Be aware of material that may get into this opening before the piercing tip moves into this space, as it will be wedged between the piercing tip and guide blades. Most jamming conditions can be prevented if the operator pays attention to the sound and vibration that is associated with a jam. Remember that because of the rod to bore ratios of displacement on the shearer's hydraulic cylinder piston, you only have half the force on jaw open compared to jaw close. When cutting, build up and cut out of small piles keeping the surfaces of the shear chin plate and upper jaw out of the dirt as much as possible. Dirt is much more abrasive than steel and needlessly increases buildup and hard surfacing time and intervals. Operators should develop the habit of assessing materials to be processed and visualizing a starting and finishing point to use the fewest cuts possible. Excessive moving, Positioning and handling cost time and money. Bringing the jaws to full open when only partial jaw open is needed for a cut wastes time and fuel, slows other excavator functions, as well as causes needless wear to hydraulic components, hoses, and O-rings. More efficient processing will extend the life of the attachment. When cutting larger materials and the shear jaw stalls just before cutting, Suspend the material on the prepared pile, open the jaw and position the material as close to the throat as possible. Without pushing down on the material with excavator force, rapidly close the jaw on the material. Using the speed of regeneration can improve performance when cutting larger materials. If the shear starts to chatter while cutting, back out of the cut and reposition at a different spot. Chattering is an indication that material is jamming between the piercing tips and guide blades or between the upper and lower cutting blades. This indicates that blade maintenance needs to be performed immediately. Worn blades and improper blade gaps are usually the cause.
It also helps to give yourself enough room to keep out of the way of other personnel and machines. Material should be picked from a pile and swung to the side and cut in a new area. This prevents redundant cutting of the same pieces and allows for the newly prepared material to be loaded out with another material handling machine. Material processing areas should be as close as safely possible to the location for loading materials for transportation. Less time spent processing, loading and transporting materials greatly affects operational costs and productivity and dramatically reduces man hours fuel costs, and wear on equipment. These are just some helpful operational tips that will help reduce downtime and keep your operators and machines producing more efficiently. If you have any operations or maintenance questions, contact your dealer or the Genesis Service Department.